coming to you from Gadigal land. This is ABC News Daily. We all expect network failures sometimes, patchy internet, dropouts in phone calls, but Optus has taken it to a whole new level. Not only were 10 million customers left without service, but for hours the telecommunications giant said it had absolutely no idea what was wrong. Today, technology expert from the University of Melbourne, Sulet Dreyfus, on how an outage like this can leave us all vulnerable. Sulet, when I woke up on Wednesday morning, I thought, oh my, I haven't paid my Optus (laughs) phone bill. I had no idea exactly what was going on, but I assumed it was something that I had done and I gather I wasn't the only one. It's amazing how much people often think it's their own fault. Yes. But no, it was not. You were in good company. And of course, when your telephone service is interrupted, it's not just your mobile phone. It's also things like your SMSs. Yeah, we're not so good at getting by when our networks go down, are we? It's challenging. I can't get into my bank, so I can't get a coffee this morning, which is a bit sad. I woke up this morning. I had Wi-Fi at home, so I thought I was going to be okay. Um, But then leaving the house, I realised I couldn't map where I had to go today. I had a meeting. Um, I'm trying to meet a friend for coffee, and uh, I can't even, like, text her to say that I'm here. It is. We are so deeply dependent on this technology now. We use it in so many aspects of our lives that when it goes down, it's not just about you not being able to call mum. I even heard a woman call in to ABC Radio to say she knew the internet was out when her cat came knocking because the Wi-Fi connected (laughs) feeder failed to deliver a meal at 10 past six in the morning, which, you know, wow. <laughs> because her cat feeder isn't working. <laughs> really up. So the, what, the cat feeder is an... In, is it's a Wi-Fi cat feeder. Exactly. And your, uh, and your automated vacuum cleaner. Oh, yes. You know, wouldn't wouldn't be you know sweeping your house uh it does it does affect everything some of it more humor in a more humorous way and some of it a more serious way yeah exactly there is a serious side to this because 10 million mobile customers and broadband users were hit by the outage so you know this affected hospitals didn't it train networks it did in fact a member of my family was doing patient transport from a hospital to uh, another facility and uh, and that was hit by it. You know, the hospital was hit by it, couldn't, couldn't reach the hospital. And the transport is dealing with traffic chaos in Melbourne because the trains were interrupted. People who use two-factor authentication uh, for their banking or for uh, logging in for work, or even if they're university students for an exam where they have to log into something, if they were an Optus customer, they apparently were finding that they couldn't use their two-factor because the SMS wasn't working to confirm it, which means they couldn't get in. So it really does affect an awful lot of things. And it's not to mention the 400,000 businesses that were impacted that couldn't make money for hours because they rely on FPOS terminals that are connected to the internet. FPOS doesn't work. All the entire network system doesn't work. Mobile phone doesn't work. Customer cannot pay the pay the, pay the bills. And Sulet, in the worst cases, this is a risk of life because... Normally, mobile phones can still call triple O during an outage, but landlines can't. And in this case, Optus says even some mobiles couldn't call triple O. It's a bit concerning. It is very concerning. And it's something that although Optus uh, issued a statement at about 1 p.m. saying that they were getting some services back up, they admitted they couldn't guarantee all those essential services were getting back up. Mm. And so, you know, when you think you've been so clever, oh, you know, I've I've tried to ha- keep my landline, for which I'm paying a couple hundred bucks a year, really, even though I probably don't need it that much because mm. I'm using my mobile now for everything, 
But, you know, I just like that reliability in case something, an emergency happens. Mm. I think a few people think that way. And suddenly, no, yeah. it's not, not the case. Right. Well, we're talking on Wednesday afternoon. And one of the most remarkable things was it took six hours after the outage started for the Optus CEO, Kelly Bayer Rosmarin, to appear on ABC Radio to try and explain what was going on. We're really, really uh, apologetic and sorry that our connection has gone down today. The teams are working with huge effort to try and restore services as a priority. But really... At that point, they had no idea. Our team is still pursuing every possible avenue. We had a number of hypotheses and each one so far that we've tested and put in place new actions for has not resolved the fundamental issue. So So Optus is saying that there's no indication it was a cyber attack. And then late on Wednesday, all it was saying was that it was a technical issue. Unfortunately, we had a technical network outage today. We were focused on restoring service for customers and we'll now do a thorough root cause analysis and make sure that we capture all the learnings from what occurred. Tell me, why was it taking so long for a huge company like Optus to figure out what went wrong? What would it have been looking for in those those rather stressful, I would have thought, hours? Well, I suspect the first thing they were looking for is trying to uh, determine whether or not it was a cybersecurity attack, because obviously that changes the flavor of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if it is a, can I say, normal fault, you know, whether it's an accident or a piece of equipment or or whatever, uh, perhaps an upgrade has been introduced to something and, and that's caused a sort of fundamental system failure, you have to worry about it potentially spreading in terms of impact on service. But you don't have to worry about it spreading the way that malicious software, malware, might be designed to spread, infect things, brick devices. What that means is turning the desktop computer at the head office, all of them into being so useless they are effectively like bricks. And and that is in some ways a major difference between a failure of a system just in its own right versus a cybersecurity attack. Mm. The communications minister, Michelle Rowland, said on Wednesday morning that it appeared to be a deep fault in the core. It would be a a problem that is uh, what we call deep in the network, Mm. um, but certainly one that would require the full resources of Optus to be thrown at it um, at pace. What does that mean? Who knows? (laughs) You know, I sort of... (laughs) It sounds very serious. Right in the core. Well, <laughs> it is rather funny uh, that that uh, Michelle Rowland <laughs> described it as a, a deep fault because actually I probably would have described it as a wide fault if it's hitting 10 million people. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, but I think what it means is uh, she probably didn't wasn't given a lot of information, and and I, I'm sure ministers don't like being left in the dark. So I think that there was perhaps an undertone of that. Yes. All right. So we won't read too much into the deep fault in the core. But anyway, customers, of course, Sulet are understandably angry, and it isn't the first time Optus has had problems because we had the huge hack last year. <laughs> A brazen theft, massive in scale and entirely online. We're so deeply disappointed because we spend so much time and we invest so much in preventing this from occurring. Optus says the stolen information may include customers' names, birth dates, phone numbers, email and home addresses. So whatever happened, it does highlight our dependency on networks like Optus. It is. And look, some good things have come out of a series of cyber attacks and uh, interruptions to service as a result of those, including things like requirements from the government that these sort of carriers are critical infrastructure. It's not just water, gas, electricity. And with that came reporting requirements. So last year, the federal government put a positive security reporting requirement 
uh, on these telco carriers. That means that they have to report cybersecurity incidents within 12 to 72 hours, depending on what sort of incident it is. That's quite important because at least then we've got a little bit of assurance that there's some transparency to government where there's a cybersecurity attack. All right. Well, what can actually be done to protect telecommunications networks? And I mean, really, should we just expect this to happen again? It's something we should get used to. Look, it is difficult to, to – there's not much that can, consumers can do other than put pressure on their politicians to force transparency of reporting in a timely fashion. Mm-hmm. And that started to happen, although perhaps a little more transparency where uh, the incident is a fault rather than just, uh, you know, a, a particular thing like a cybersecurity attack. But there's not much you can do except, obviously, if you've got a high-risk situation, you have someone at home who might need medical care in an urgent fashion, you might have to think about getting you know, supply of communications from more than one provider in order to maximize the chances that, you know, only one of them will go down at a given time and you'll have a backup. And so that's not just about having a mobile and a landline. That's actually about having an Optus and a Telstra or, you know, some other carrier. These systems are ever more complex And that's good because it's giving us fast internet at home. Um, You know, we can put our feet up and watch Netflix. And and so there are some obviously terrific benefits to it. But I think there are pretty good chances that we'll see these things happen again in the future. And that may be through cyber attacks or it may just be through errors in the system. Uh, But it does show we are pretty vulnerable in this space. Sulet Dreyfus is a technology expert from the University of Melbourne. This episode was produced by Nell Whitehead, Anna John and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is David Cody. I'm Sam Pawley. To get in touch with the team, please email us on ABC News Daily at abc.net.au. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free.